All right, here is my 1965 F100. So about a year of ownership now. Blue is back in this corner here. Unfortunately, it's here for a little bit longer now because I am taking the original 352 out this time and not putting it back in. I know I just did a restoration on it where I took it out, cleaned up the whole front end, redid the suspension and everything, and placed it back in there, all cleaned up with headers and a serpentine kit, and adapted the 6R80 to work with it with the standalone computer. But unfortunately, it's not exactly what I wanted. My goal for this truck is to be able to get in it and go anywhere. So I wanted to do fuel injection on the 352, but unfortunately, it's just not in my price range anymore to put more money into this engine. It was gonna cost me around $3,000 more on top of what I already done to the engine. And at that point, I was to the point where I'm like, I might as well do a Coyote swap. So that's where I'm going. I'm really excited. The Coyote comes in today, I believe. So today is the day. I'm gonna start taking the, doing the process of taking the transmission out, getting that out of the way, the engine out, and just getting her ready for the Coyote swap. So the Coyote does bolt right in, no cutting. It should be required less little modification for the frame just because of the fact that I need to get the stock manifolds to fit. But other than that, she should bolt right in. I'm really excited. So before I start gutting blue out again, I just kind of want to give you guys a quick recap of what I've been up to with this truck. I only had this truck for about a year now and I've done a lot to it. Majority of my family didn't see the potential in the truck like I did. I don't blame them. Look how bad the interior was. It was shot. Also, there was rust in the gas tank, so I did that little quick fix, got her running, and she was running pretty good for what it was. Even Chewy was ready to go for some cruising. He was ready. As I started to take Blue more and more apart, I realized I had a lot of work ahead of me. Just look at these floors. There was so much rust everywhere, rust and dirt. It was a farm truck, so this was expected. So. Here's a little clip here, jeez. So I started cleaning up the floor, so I grinding them off, getting ready for the new patch wells to come in. There wasn't too many holes, thankfully, so I was ready to go. Then I had to get the transmission out right here, so that's actually pretty light for what it is. Then I started spraying some lizard skin in here for some sound, and also we did the whole wiring harness in the truck. Had Chewy come over and help me, as you can tell. So the next task at hand was to take the front end off. So I had my grandpa come over and help me, he helped me pull it off. Actually, surprisingly, he looked like he wasn't struggling, it looked like I was struggling more to carry that, which was crazy because it was kind of heavy. He impressed me with this one. That old man strength kicked in real quick. Now I had an absolute mess on the side of the house, but it was time to take out the engine. Of course, when I got the engine out, I had to put it next to the Mustang and make fun of the inline six. As you could tell, this engine was caked on with oil, dirt, and grime, so it took a long time for me to get it cleaned up. But eventually, I did, and look, she was pretty. Since I got the engine all cleaned up now, I couldn't put a clean engine on this dirty frame and suspension, so I had to get that cleaned up now. And this actually was worse than the engine. It took me a lot longer to get all this done, which was insane. Since I didn't have a lift, I had to make do what I had. I just jacked up the cab so it fit on top of these blocks here. And then I went underneath and started cleaning up the bottom end and getting ready to paint for the frame. And then she really started to pop. So up next was the suspension, took it all apart, replaced all the bushings and kingpins and painted it all and it started to come out really really nice. At this point I started getting really excited to put the engine in because everything around it was so nice and clean. Once I saw the engine inside the engine bay, oh it was crunch time. I really wanted to drive this truck and it was insane. Look how there was no cutting involved, it just fit there like factory, it was insane. Started cleaning the panels around the engine the inner fender wells, put them on and she was looking pretty. My girlfriend even came by and helped me with the steering column, cutting it up. Redid the brakes. I also needed new tires because those tires were like 22 years old, which was insane. They're ready to go. So I went and got some Mickey Thompsons, and they looked amazing on the truck. Just look at it. A completely night and day difference. But Blue's paint was faded, so I decided to give it a quick polish, and she came back to life. Just look at the complete difference there is. So Blue has been through a lot with me in this corner, but unfortunately, she's back here again, and it's time for a Coyote Swap. Today is a very exciting day. I've just been notified that the Coyote engine has been delivered. Have to go to FedEx to pick it up. I'm using my uncle's trailer over there to go pick it up. Really, really excited. The garage is semi clean for, for it. It's going to be placed right here. Should be enough room right here for it. I just got to move these buckets and stuff. So, place right next to the Mustang. 
be some good pictures though but it's not for the mustang it's for the truck the inline six is probably scared but the inline six is gonna stay it's for the truck <laughs> So here's the engine. To my surprise, it actually fits. Had to get a little close to the Mustang here. A little too close for comfort, but it's not hitting. Hopefully there's no earthquakes over here. Be good to go. But dang. It's actually pretty clean for what it is. It's a used engine. Came from a 2013 Mustang. 58,000 miles on it right now. Overall, really, really excited for this engine. Can't wait to put it in. All right, now let's start gutting blue out. I'm gonna start cutting the zip ties off and getting rid of this loom out of the way. Don't wanna break any wires while I'm down here. Do a lot of zip ties. So the transmission is almost done, ready to come out. I still need to get the torque converter bolts off. So what I'm going to do is, instead of turning it by hand, there isn't too much clearance down here with the fans and everything in the radiator. So I'm just going to turn it by key. Just disconnect the ignition coil. Probably should make sure that's not touching any metal. Let's see, let's put it there. Good enough. And I'm going to turn it by key just so I can get access to the last two bolts.
be that bad. Right. Uh, moral support, I guess. Are you just going to take it off of here? Yeah. No, this, just this one? Yeah, just get rid of this Maybe the, other, maybe the other one's on? That's what I have to do. Okay. My professional expertise. Mm. Three, two, one. <laughs> So that's all I have planned for today on Blue Eyes for this episode. Next week episode, I plan on draining the radiator, taking off the radiator hoses, heater hoses, AC lines, power steering lines, fuel line, take off the carburetor, that's where I'm lifting the engine from, disconnect the mini starter down there, take off the hood, and pull Blue out, and also drop in the Coyote. So if this is the kind of stuff that you like, the kind of content that you like, go ahead and subscribe, hit that like button, it's much appreciated. Thank you.